All right, welcome back. I'm Eric Myers of Myers Mushrooms. Today I want to talk about humidification and fruiting room controls, a little bit about my uh, setup here in Kansas and, and why I have it set up this way. Uh, so this is my fruiting room. It is 13 by 20. And you can see I have a fresh air intake coming up at the top up there. Um, that's running 24 seven, so I don't have a controller on that down here. Uh, but there's a dimmer up top that'll control it. Uh, from there, that fresh air flow flows into the fan and then the misting circuit, which are the black lines up there, will humidify the room. And that's a 1000 PSI uh, DIY CAT system that I built. I had a video and I'll put a link below or above. Um, running that is this. So this is a cycle timer. It's a minute cycle timer. So it goes up to about an hour and for, for between, <coughs> between cycles. And then the cycle run time can go anywhere from a couple seconds up to uh, 30 minutes as well. Um, so the nice part about this is you can play with it. So you, a lot of people don't understand that are getting into this. They think, what is the humidity? What should the humidity be? It should be 97%. No, it's not so much a set number. It should fluctuate. You should have it to where the room gets wet and the room dries out a little bit to where the mushrooms can absorb the moisture, the walls and floors can get wet. And then you shut off your humidifier and let the room get dry. Uh, especially in times where you want to harvest, like we're about to harvest the, a lot of these blocks here on both sides, uh, you don't want the humidifier to kick on right away. So closer to harvest, you want to manually adjust those times, okay? So you would have your, your off time be further away and your on time, the amount of cycle time that it runs for, shorter. Um, the other trick that I do to, to achieve that is I have this switch. This switch controls this outlet. So this switch is off right now. So that means the timer's not getting power and the pump is not cycling. By having this switch off, I can, for instance, this instance, I got off work. I saw these were ready for harvest. They were a little bit wet. I turned off the switch. I even turned down the temperature a little bit uh, to help dry it out a little bit more. And then the mushrooms will dry out and I'll harvest them in, in the next hour or two. So they won't be soaking wet going into the, into the harvest bins. So that's how I have my setup uh, for light controls. I really, really, really like this controller. Uh, this is a, a timer controller and it has the my off and my on, my on and my off time. So it just runs on a repeat cycle. But then also if I want to manually override it, I can easily manually override it. Um, let's say I come out here uh, in the middle of the night and the lights are off and I just want to come in here and check something. I don't mess up the, the switch. So if you're familiar with the other ones, like the clock ones, you can leave it on time, uh, light on, outlet on, and it bypasses it. This one, you can turn it on in the middle of the night, forget to turn it off, and the next day it'll just pick up where it left, left off and keep cycling, keep cycling. So I really like this controller. Uh, it's a, I forget, I'll put the link for, for it below. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like $20, not even, real handy. And then for the, for my temperature control, I have a, a Inkbird, I think it's an ITC 1000. And what that is doing, this one is in, in particular, I have controlling the mini split up there. So that one is, there's a little four watt or five watt, 120 watt, or 120 volt heating element that's on the room sensor. So it's not going off the temperature of the room, it's going off of this. Um, and it'll kick on that room sensor heater tricking the air conditioner to run a little bit more. So um, yeah, that's how I have, have my control set up. One of the most important things for if you're designing a fruiting room is making sure that you have your fresh air blending with the room air and your humidification kind of all in the same zone. Some people will duct it. You don't necessarily need it ducted, but you want it to be all coming together. That way you don't have a dry spot. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my in and outs on, on the fruiting room setup that I have here. Uh, if anybody's interested and you like my content, I do have one last class coming up in September this month. Um, so check out MyersMushrooms.com for my upcoming class. That's my last class until April of 2021 because I'm getting on the military and I'm doing an internship and I won't have time to do the class during the internship. Uh, so that's your last opportunity to get great content like this that's really not readily available out there. Um, so yeah, some other key features I wanted to point out about this room is we just put the, the roller uh, wheels in here. So we got these carts, these are 18 by 48, five, six tiers. And then we welded, Ryan welded on some, uh, some wheels on there. 
that allows us to easily move these carts around the room uh, for loading and unloading and we can position them in different spots depending on if they're in the dry spot of the room or in the wet spot of the room if we're closer to harvest or if we're trying to pin them so yeah well hopefully you like this quick video if you like it check out my patreon.com slash myers mushrooms you can also check out myersmushrooms.com for all your equipment supplies uh, mushroom grow bags uh, we now have liquid cultures so tr davis earth angel mushrooms is making liquid cultures for us and uh, top quality super sterile checked um, verified clean cultures that are commercial grade so uh, check that out below in myersmushrooms.com and uh, yeah have a good one keep on mushrooming